are here at the First United Methodist Church in Stillwater, Oklahoma, and joining me is Sarah Hills, and she is a counseling psychology doctoral student. And today we're here to look at the labyrinth that they have here. Can you kind of tell us a little bit, as gardeners, we often look at uh, garden labyrinths and garden mazes as being the same thing. Mm. Can you differentiate those two for us? Sure, yeah, a labyrinth and a maze do look somewhat similar. However, they're very different in purpose and structure. So um, in a maze, there are dead ends. You can get lost, you can feel trapped or tricked. Um, so they're frustrating. And in a labyrinth, there are no dead ends. Okay. There's no trick to this at all. It's a universal path that just takes you both in and out. As long as you trust that the path will take you where you need to go, you will get there. And this is a little bit of a metaphor for life. Yeah, absolutely, it is. Because we don't actually know where we're headed. Mm -hmm. We have to trust that if we stay on the path, we'll get where we need to go. So as we walk the labyrinth, we know we're headed towards the center mm -hmm. and then back out again. But you'll notice that even as we approach this turn here, we're actually going to head back to the outside. But we're so close. We're so close. <laughs> I know, we're so close, but we're going to start heading back to the outside again. Okay. And in most labyrinths, that's how it works. So you feel as though you're losing sight of your goal. But in actuality, there is no goal. Okay, and now you are using this with your studies um, concerning grief counseling. Yes. How does a labyrinth play into grief counseling? Well, I am a grief counselor um, at University Counseling Services, and one of the things we look for are tools that help people to approach their grief rather than try to avoid it. And the labyrinth has been used for grief for centuries. Um, it definitely also mimics the grief journey. It's not linear. Mm -hmm. It's curvilinear. You know? <laughs> we move in and out of it. We have good days. We have days where things are more tough. So as people walk, they find that it helps them to process through some of the things that they've been going through. Um, it fosters creativity okay. and um, allows a person to just be okay. and just to experience what's here. Um, most of the anecdotal records that had to do with labyrinths um, really suggest that it's very helpful for grief and people notice um, immediate changes in how they feel, what they're experiencing. Um, and how they view the process. Now, you don't just have to be suffering from grief. I mean, this can help uh, any person, any correct? Person, At any yeah. stage in their life. Any stage, any age, um, it it's here for everyone. That's the beauty of it being available in public spaces as well. It's free, it's simple, it works, um, and it helps people to become more mindful, more in touch with the present moment, uh, and frees them up from the life's worries as they're here. Okay. Um, it's and available for children. We're now so far away from look the at, center. Look how far we are <laughs> from the center. But we will get back there eventually. Trust that we will. Okay. We will. So Sarah, you know, obviously people aren't typically talking about labyrinths as they're going through a labyrinth. Mm -hmm. What is the process as you go through a labyrinth? What should a person be thinking about? Well, that's another wonderful thing. There just is no expectation. There's no right or wrong way to walk in a labyrinth. Um, the process is simply walking. Okay. And what that does is I think it makes it accessible to everyone, open to everyone. You can't make a mistake here. Um, you can't arrive at the end and think you did it wrong somehow. And I think that's different from other types of exercise that we use. So it also works great for everyone's fitness level. Uh -huh. No expectations there. You can walk as fast or as slow as you'd like. And many authors believe that just simply stepping into the labyrinth actually begins to foster that mindful, meditative process um, all on its own. You don't have to actually do something. Now, some people can come with an intention. So walking a labyrinth intentionally means having an idea of something you'd like to focus on mm -hmm. while you're here. And maybe that's a celebration even, like an anniversary or a full moon, <laughs> a solstice or something like that. Um, and so you're walking for an occasion. But maybe it's simply something like as I walk the labyrinth today, I will pay attention to the feel of the ground underneath my feet. And what that does is keep that mindful focus, that focused concentration on the being instead of worrying about the future, thinking about the past, just present and right here. Right. We're pretty far away <laughs> from the center <laughs> again. again. We are, yes. But we will make it eventually. We will. We um, will. I love that it's such a metaphor for life. Now, are all the patterns the same? No, they aren't. Um, most of them are some kind of path encased in a circle. 
but they come in squares. Um, they are on buildings, they're in pictures. The one that we have um, just recently added to campus is based on a Fibonacci spiral. Mm -hmm. So they're all different. There is a typical type of pattern though, and that's some kind of a we weaving path within a circle. Okay. And you've mentioned that some are made even with like light and shadows, that it's just a shadow on the ground and stuff? Yeah, they can be made of all different materials. They can be mowed in the grass, pavers as we see here. Um, they can be made from light and dark contrasting materials and shadows. Um, in Tulsa, at OSU Tulsa, we have a shadow labyrinth that's on display occasionally. So very portable. They can even be made on canvas, which can be rolled up and taken to different places for display. Excellent. Well, we have made it to the center here. We have. So um, now is a chance to kind of sit and reflect on some of those things? If and... you choose to, yes. Okay. Um, again, no right or wrong thing to do here in the center. Um, it's entirely up to you and what you feel in the moment. You can simply turn around and head back out if that's what you would like to do as well. Okay. Well, let's take this opportunity. You're also heavily involved in an organization on campus. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I am, sure. Part of my job as, the, as a grief counselor at um, UCS is that I am president of a student organization called AMF, which stands for Actively Moving Forward. And we are a part of a national organization that supports college students who are suffering the loss of a loved one while away from home. We have two components to our group. We have a service group and a support group. Obviously in the support group we're going to be talking about people and sharing our love stories about the people that we've lost. The service group, however, you don't have had to have lost a loved one to be a part of that group. Mm -hmm. And so people that are in the service group are trying to give back to our campus community. We started kind of our, what we call our labyrinth project as part of a way to give back to the campus. Um, we wanted to have a visual uh, space on campus that was recognizable as something that belonged to our organization so that we could try to support the campus in a, a larger, more constructive way. And where could somebody go to find more information about your organization? Well, they can definitely contact me at UCS, um, and you can also check Facebook, AMF at OSU, and we have a Campus Link account as well. Excellent. Thank you for joining us, Sarah. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.